All right, here we go, Overdrive, off and running, TSN 1050 on the TSN app, your home smart speaker up on TSN 4, Brian Hayes, the Odar Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles McLennan, how are we feeling on a beautiful Thursday afternoon? Amazing, I think this is yeah. the last gasp of crispiness, and it is crisp out there, but mm-hmm. I think after this, it's golf time. It is really? Yeah, time. I think you're right. I, I, my wife sent me a picture this morning. She was outside. You know, it's cold. Like it is cold and yeah. windy, but like you can kind of see some flowers starting to come. Like the grass is looking pretty good. I agree. Once we get through this, there's no excuse, man. And we should know be what three, four weeks it away. Is, hazy. It's rat season because you know why? Everyone that goes golfing for two weeks now, they send pictures. One of our I fearless know. leader, yeah. the leader of the Nichols group, he had to just text the pick on the golf course. And it's like, how about not the pick? Not the pick. Yeah, exactly. I don't need yeah. it. You're right. Our and with the little thing underneath, and... how's the weather up there? I uh, hate it's that so one. gutless. It's so <laughs> it uncalled is. for. It's so uncalled for. Yeah, that's I the hear same it's as. Not great up there. Yeah, I know. We know. And you it's know. It's the You're same as here. office for the day. It's like yeah. when people yeah. hashtag that one. You want to fly down there and dummy them poolside. Office for the day. <laughs> well, you know who does that the most is Matt Cause. Matt Cause yeah. does that all the time, and he actually he he gets a kick out of it because he'll be up at his place in Muskoka, and you know he he takes a picture through a glass of wine, and it is just this guy is living his best life. He lives yeah. it and up. You're right. That is. You're right. He's he's a him. modern day Muskoka Five guy. He's the yes. sixth member of the Muskoka Six now. Matt Cause yes. is a part of that crew. I mean, I never thought I'd see the day where we'd be including or adding people to the Muskoka clan, but that's exactly what Cause is doing. You're right. At least Cause will yeah. save that, though, for the summer when it is beautiful up here. Uh, but always right. You're getting people that are in Florida, they're in Arizona, California, down in the Caribbean, and everyone can't wait to send you a pic about how great life is down there. But uh, it's all good. Because we're up here and we're working and we got things to get into today because, you know, week tomorrow is the trade deadline and we're all going to be in there. We're all going to be working. And obviously one name came off the board last night. That would be Chris yeah. Tanev on his way to Dallas. And, you know, our insiders had been saying that for a couple of days. It sounded like Dallas was really making a push. And, you know, the, the price, everyone's got a different view on the price. I think what sticks out for me is two different things. One, the retainment of money. Right, it goes through Jersey and then down to Dallas. They're paying twenty five percent of a contract that is not really that large to begin with. And there wasn't a first round pick. Wasn't a first right. round pick and a lot of retained money. That seems like a pretty good deal for Dallas. I agree. I think Dallas, I mean, they, they targeted the player. And, and I saw every time anybody gets traded, and I know the Leafs were linked to it. So you see Brad Tree Living, you know, trending on Twitter today going, what, the Leafs couldn't? Now, I don't I think Well, the what was the missing round, factor, right? the second rounder? It's like, yeah. you don't have one. They don't one, have one for three ball. years. Yeah, they don't have yeah. a second round pick for three years. Yeah, I, I mean, at the end of the day, yes, would he have been a nice player to add for pennies on the dollar if you could swing it? You just couldn't you couldn't swing it. That's mm-hmm. you know if, if Dallas had the best offer on the table for Craig Conroy and his management group, that's what you got to go with. And even though there is a relationship between Conroy and and Tree Living because they work together or Connie worked with him, uh, you know ultimately, you know Tree has to if he's after a defenseman, especially a top four, he's going to have to set his sights on other players. And yeah, but noodles. You know, what I, I talked about is the other day is it seems like Dallas, and I appreciate it. It's like. Tanev's available. What's it going to take? It, will it be this? Yep. This plus this? Will that do it? And they found out a deal that would get it done. And there's the other tweet I hate. And some of my friends that I know in the industry floated one out there. And they're like, <laughs> Toronto was in it right to the end. It's just like, oh, you don't yeah, need that's... to tweet that. <laughs> like, you what does don't that mean, need to... though? Were, I know. I, phone it, calls? It, it was several, I saw that one, several of those. It was like, my understanding is Toronto was in it right to the end. Thanks a lot. Nobody cares. It's just like, <laughs> yeah. I, I know. Guess who else was in it right until the end? The Blue Jays with Shohei yeah. Otani. Greg how, Norman how was right in go? the Masters right Right in the there, end. man. <laughs> he was. He Toronto's was. always were right in there, right? Toronto yeah, just, yeah. Eh, almost, man. I just I don't really know what's think. the necessity of floating that tweet out. They were right in it. Engagement. Well, Anything you attach the Maple Leafs to 
is engagement. That it yep. creates more clicks, more eyeballs, more conversation. Everything is leaf related. You're going to get an explosion of engagement. So it's smart for it's it's good for business. I mean, make no mistake. And that doesn't mean that it's not accurate that the Leafs were in on Tanev. I think what might be more interesting is the idea that if there's any truth to the idea that Trey living in the flames, they can't make a deal or the Leafs are going to get super taxed because of Trey living. If that's the case, then it's time to scratch the flames off the list. Move on. Don't yeah, talk you don't know what their ownership, their ownership exactly. might have said screw tree. Don't and trade they're entitled to that. If they want exactly. to, that's their call. And guess what? The Leafs aren't the only team in the league. You can't get everybody. Dallas is a good team. They wanted Tanev. Yeah. They went out and got him. Like go get another player. Yeah. If you want another player. Yeah, I agree. Like that's, you know, Whatever the cost of doing business is, they couldn't make that work. And to be honest, you're right. Like, if, if there is that, the rumblings of, oh, you know, ownership didn't want to deal with Tree or whatever, I, I don't believe that. I think what you're trying to do is make your team better. And, you know, Dallas made their team better. I think Greg Conroy got the assets he, he wanted. If you take a look at his actual body of work, traded Zadorov, and he got a third and a fifth there. Uh, you know, Traded Lindholm to Vancouver. Lynn home to Vancouver, got Kuzmenko, but you also get some picks and, and, and prospects. Same thing, picks and prospects from Dallas. Like what he's doing is acquiring currency, which is what managers doing. And when you're retooling, you're gonna he's retooling on the fly by, by the looks of it. And it'll be. I I don't think he's done. You got to deal with no Hannafin here. Still. Well, it'll, and it'll Hannafin be, will get more than that. I think what's been established here with this deal. Based on what is available, like courtesy the TSN trade bait board, if there's other players we're not aware of, other players that be that that break loose and become available between now and next Friday, obviously this statement will not apply. But Hannafin will garner more of a price and deserves to to garner more of a price. He's a better player. He's younger, so they'll. I'd be shocked if they didn't get a first rounder plus for Hannafin. Oh yeah. But anybody yes. else on that list is getting less. Because, you right. know, whoever whoever else you want, you mentioned, like, I'm seeing Matt Dumba for a first. Are you nuts? That guy, he That's could have been had happening. for free in the summer. No, he had no market. No one, And all of a yeah. sudden, you're going to pay a first for a guy you could have got for $3 million in the summer? That, that would be malpractice. That's insane. Yeah. If you like, pay no that, you are that. a moron. A exactly. Moron. And, and yeah. that's, I think, again, if you're putting a leaf spin on this, what I appreciate is, undoubtedly, they would have loved Tanev. They're not going to pay more than they're supposed to. And that's good management. Right? It would have been great right. if Tanev was here, but I've never been a believer of, well, just do it. Who cares? It takes If it costs you, Easton Cowan, you pay it. No, you don't. That's silly. No. That's stupid. you got to house That's, a team. Exactly. you got to yeah. house a team. you got to have some backbone, and you have to you have to know what's out there. Like you got to know that this team's only willing to pay that, so we're not going to go any further. If you like our guy, we'll make that deal. If not, we pivot, you move on. It is interesting that it coincides with what Keith is saying today, where they're going to flip Riley and Brody back, and and Keith essentially is saying we're in a jam here, like we're in a jam. Lilligren's injured, even when he's playing, we have one right shot defenseman. I think Keith is basically crying out to Tree publicly, which means yeah. you know he's been saying it privately for weeks. You got to find me someone who can play on the right side. Like you got to find me a right defenseman, and I would assume that that's what's yeah. going to happen. Between now and next Friday, they will find somebody that they feel comfortable with somewhere in their top six. May not be defined as a top four, but again, I use Luke Shen a lot as an example. When he was acquired, he wasn't top four, but he played himself into that because he played well with Riley. And, you know, this this recent two-week run and this new philosophy, we're going to do whatever's right by the team. Morgan Riley might have to be on a third pairing, quote-unquote, and find minutes somewhere else. He won't get third right. third pairing minutes. He won't play fifteen. He'll play eighteen, nineteen, and he'll find minutes on, you know, the power play or in different areas in the third period. But you, you, it can't just be well. Whoever plays with Riley, that means you're automatically in the top four. If it's not yeah, the best interest of the team, playing thirty minutes a right. night and exactly. skating up and down the ice all night it doesn't work. I've seen well, it too often. And, and you know what? The, of the guys that are left, you know, I've, I've heard the the kid out of. Um, Nashville, Alexander Carrier, you know, Carrier, a yeah. right shot. Good yeah, skater. Carrier, good, good skater. Good skater. But he's 5'11". Like, yeah, not I watched a big him guy. play the other night. Like, again, where's your philosophy if you want somebody? Like, are you looking for a tree or a shrub? 
You know, like that's that's oh, you know, it, it depending. The tree or well, a I stole that. I, like that. I stole that from Ray Ferraro. Oh, I, I, that okay. is not mine. It sounds like a Ray Ferraro line. But that sounds like a Pat said, Quinn kind of too. Are you a tree or a shrub? You a big giant tree or a little shrub? <laughs> <laughs> but that's Ray. Uh, Ray had had quoted saying he had talked to a manager saying he wanted you know on the back end, mm-hmm. if, especially on that third pairing. Teams have had shrubs where they want big trees. <laughs> yes, and I situation. agree with that philosophy. Yes, That's right. the conundrum the Leafs are running into here, Noodles. Like, Sean Walker's the same. Walker's not a big guy at Philly. He's not a big right. guy, but he's, he's a right-handed There's enough shot. defensemen back there already that are 5'11", 6 well, foot. That's the question. So that's like, enough. That's, that's enough. Well, and that's what I'm saying. That's why Tanev made a lot of sense. I understand that. And why yeah. a lot of people were, were actively seeking him out. Because he's not. He's a, he's a giant tree. He's a big guy. He's physical. He blocks shots. Kills right. penalties. Um, but Walker, Carrier, those guys don't fit fit that mold. Like that's that's and even Dumba is physical, but he's not a he's not a big guy. He's not having no, a great he's year. He's not a big guy either. He's not a big yeah. guy, and that's the question. Like I, I agree with that philosophy. I think if you're going to add here, it's got to be it's got to be monsters. That that's what they're lacking here. They they need size. We just had Bruce Cassidy tell us that two days ago. We've had countless NHL coaches talk about it throughout history saying the best teams, the teams that get to the dance, generally have monsters on defense. And yeah. that's – so it's not as much about the right shot, who's going to play with this guy. Give me one or two guys who are 6'3", 220, and make it work. And, and I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if that's what Tree Living's thinking right now. I just don't know if they're available. you know. And if they yeah. are, how much is he willing to pay? What does he have that he can – he can pay to pry those guys out, and he's not alone. You know there's a number of teams who are saying, that's our philosophy. That's what we want, too. Why would you yeah. not? Well, and you start digging around, and, and again, we're doing it right now. They've been doing it probably for months. You start digging around teams who are going to be clear-cut sellers. You know, San Jose's, the Arizona's now. Like, Arizona Ooh. is in one. Ooh. Don't I, say it too much today, they guys. They better win it's tonight, tra- the Leafs. Dude, it's a I, trap we go, I've if said we it already, go it's a trap on game. all afternoon about the 13-0-13 oh, or whatever the hell Arizona's doing, just keep this in mind. They win every time they play in Toronto. I think nine the last step. Nine of ten in Toronto. So we're not talking today about how they better win tonight and win big because it's just not happening on my watch. There's on no this disrespect to Arizona. Show. <laughs> Bruce Cassidy, what, we're drop. not playing that again either. I love Brucey. That's my favorite <laughs> clip ever. No disrespect to Arizona as I bury Arizona. Yeah. I hear you. Oh, but 13 straight, they've lost. It's Arizona. Like you got to, you got to win this game tonight. This is like, a must win. Yeah, it's a, it's like, a borderline is. must win. Did you not <laughs> hear what I just year. said? It's a leap year. It's a freaky time. There's weird it mojo is. in the air. I understand what you're saying, but this is one. If you get goalie, that's one thing. If you get, if they have average goaltending, and I think Ingram's playing tonight, average goaltending, you got to win this game at home. You got to beat Arizona right. right now, dude. You're saying all the. <laughs> I just. But I have no bearing it. on what's going to happen. I, no, I know. Talk it's just like Gord Miller. Gord Miller's like, I don't. It doesn't matter if I say shut out. Next thing you know, three are digging out of the net, and it's like Gord, you can't. <laughs> so you're blaming me I, if they I, lose tonight, Is dude. That, I, just I just said like record. we can't. We can't talk like that. Like, it's just these guys are garbage, and they're going to mop them up tonight. If they lose tonight, I'm not doing the show tomorrow. I swear to God, man. <laughs> There's That's but, a mojo. So now you're going to hope they lose tonight so you get a no, day off. No, I'm, I'm in a great workplace frame of mind. I want to work tomorrow. But if you do that to me, I'm not being on the show. <laughs> I don't understand. Like, I, I actually challenged Gord one time on air because he said, the word shutout with like, I don't know, seven minutes left in the That's game. That's greasy, like, hey, you know, man. Talbot working on the shutout. And I go, ooh, and he goes, Jamie, he goes, we have no bearing on it. He goes, your mother's back was not broken if you stepped on a crack. <laughs> you, you use that old saying. Yeah. I'm like, you're right. But it's still, I go, I'm a card-carrying member of the goaltender union. I try to show a little bit of respect. He goes, we're just calling the game. We have no bearing yeah. of what's going on out there. And that's what Hayes is saying. We, we can talk Colorado. about it being a trap game. Have any, we were in exactly. Colorado one night up four Cobb after two. And that was the Stanley <laughs> Cup year. They had Forsberg and Sackick. Four nothing after the second. I'm a second year player. I stand up and I go, boys, we can't hang Berkey out to dry in the third here. We're up four Cobb. Let's get this thing done. Everyone looks at me and they're like, 
why would you say that? Like, there was no talk of four Cobb, and goalies are weird. I thought, and all of a sudden, Claude Lemieux, Forsberg sat. It was 4-3 after five minutes, and we just hung on. <laughs> it was disgusting. Yeah. Like, we were in Berkey, total control. Just being a I think Berkey wanted to grab his stick and break it right over the back of my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's Don't cool. hang Berkey really out to dry and do stupid things. And I just had it was something a, like a second year player just should not have said. And it was out of my lane. And I remember the eyeballs I got and guys just putting their head down, shaking their head. And I'm like, <laughs> I wanted to crawl in a garbage can. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, boom, 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 four, three. Forsberg wheeling around. Oh, it was disgusting. What, I've never the felt thing worse. Is, the thing is, is what you need to do if you are the Leafs to go. We hope they win, just not against us. We are going to prevent that. We need it to be 14 for them because we need to get back on in the winning ways. We've got a tough schedule coming up. This is a, you know, this is, I wouldn't say a response game, but they, they were flat against yep. Vegas. And, and coming back to the defenseman chat, it's a prime example. Where was the free ice the other night against Vegas against those, those six Didn't on happen. the back end? Yeah. No no free Didn't ice. Happen. Those big guys moved around. They were they were physical. They were you know, time and space was limited. So you just circle that group and go, if you've got if you have trust in the six that you're throwing out there, you've got a pretty good chance with the with a forward crew that's playing very well if you yeah. No, exactly. And again tonight Riley and Brody will go on the other side and they'll flip tonight. Sheldon Keefe was fined twenty five grand for his conduct, misconduct towards the officials a couple of nights ago. So would it have been more if he teed off I, on them after the game? I was wondering that. Like, did he get his money's worth? Like, you get kicked I, out I, of the game, and then you make no comment afterwards. And you get maybe he for made 25. a real. You know, gotta, sometimes you I, kick below the belt. Maybe he went below the belt. I don't that's know. That's what I'm thinking. That's a, and, and the only what I could think of, which would be maybe deemed egregious, not wording, but if you said something like, uh, you know, you – you you want them to win, or you got you got money on on the other team? Mm -hmm. Something where you accuse like, because nowadays it, with betting and stuff, it's a very s sensitive topic. If it, if something is said that way, not not on the egregious side, but just like, hey, you know what, you got you got your you got your team's winning tonight. Something right. like that, where it's a that is would be believed as like a kick in the pills for a I ref agree, who's trying but to be in between. But the difference is, it's not public. Like when Darko Ryokovic got fined, what he got fined, it was a lot of money. Right. Yeah, this was a private was, convo. Exactly. Like that was in front of a mic where he was basically saying the, the league wants the Lakers to win. We're getting screwed because we're the Raptors. I don't know what Keith said. Like we're all speculating. We don't have any idea. We know he yeah. was going at him. We know he was not. Like maybe it's just it, it's cut and dry. You get tossed, you're getting fined. Like, it could be that. And he got yeah. tossed from the game, and they asked the ref, and the ref said this is what it is, and the league is going to protect the referees, and I understand why they should and why they will. And as a result, you're getting fined regardless. But no one knows what he said. Like, we're just speculating right. on what he said. He's still not addressing it. He's never going to admit it publicly. He did say today it's something he's got to basically scale back on. He's got to learn from. Fact. I appreciate That's that. That's fact. Yeah, he's got he's got to scale back, but I, I appreciate the fact that he's addressed that and he's acknowledged that, right? He's not being petulant about it. He's like, I'm a passionate guy, sticking up for my guys, but I got to scale it back. So I, I anticipate that he will. We'll see. I mean, he, he runs hot. We'll see. I want the Pat Quinn tonight. Literally says all the right things. The drop of the puck starts screaming again. Throwing his gum at the be, guy immediately. Would be that, that, that's exactly what happened, Noodles. Pat Quinn got the little slap on the wrist, and he addressed the whole team. Guys, as a team, we have to stop yelling at the refs. I'm not kidding Carrie Fraser, the puck came out of his hand and hit the ice, and he said, "You're a coward." And I'm like, "We're all like, what happened to the meeting we just had?" Oh, yeah. He dropped the puck, and Pat thought he was putting it on the other team's side, and the yeah. coward came out right after the Can't drop. Can't do it, man. Can't. can that, that's do That's the thing. Everyone, like every coach, will say, "Guys, we got to lay off the refs." And then as soon as the next period starts, they'll be giving it to him five minutes in. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyway, there's a lot of news out of Calgary. You're out there, obviously, Mika Kiprasov uh, getting his jersey retired this weekend. And is yeah. Rhett Warner going to be out there? Is Rhett coming out for that? Or yeah, is he... He, he's, uh, he's, he's here. Yeah. Okay, he's so Calgary. he's in town. We're have yeah. tonight. Beauty. Yeah. So Rhett will join us in about 10. We'll get his take on that. And it, it, there are reports out there that Calgary, it sounds like they're going to hang on to Markstrom 
for you know the rest of this year. We'll see. I mean, the trade deadline is next Friday. Who don't, knows? I I find that fishy. Don't you think? Like, it's still a week before the deadline. Right. Why like, make if, that if announcement? You're trying to, exactly. Maybe and that's it's not an the announcement. Other teams, it was a, your other offers. It's a report. Thinks, yeah, you're right. we're keeping them. Yeah. Your other offers it, thinks we're keeping them. So maybe if you bump it up and call me back, I don't know. I'll change my right. mind. It could be a exactly tactic. like that, to me. I don't know. That, that might be a little bit of posturing. It's like. It's a report. You're right, but it's you know some credible insiders, that type of stuff. And it's like, all right, well that is not happening now. But you got a week to sweeten that deal if, right. you, if there is one there. So, Probably a smart play. The old, no, I don't think so. Maybe we'll just hang on to that guy. You know, how desperate yeah. are you, Jersey? But how does the goal did, noodles? Do you have any kind of information? Does the goalie want to stay in Calgary, or he's just I, like I'll I, go I wherever? Don't, I'm going to actually see him tomorrow, but I, I, I have no idea if he wants to go, if they want to keep him. Like, I know he has, a, has kids and he's liked it here in Calgary. That's all I know. But I, again, if it's an opportunity, it, it, it has to be brought across his desk because he controls his own desk. He's got a no move clause. So, regardless, Greg Conroy could cook up the greatest deal ever and he could go to. You know, Markstrom and his management team, and they go, he's he's staying. So he controls it. So I, I have no idea, but I, I still, you you got a week, you know, just eight days still to, to sort it out, good, bad, or indifferent. And, you know, Craig Connery is stuck to his word. He's He moved, you know, Lindholm. He moved Zadorov. Now he's moved Tanev. Was, you know, Hannafin's the next guy up, so mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there. Yeah, he's moving on all these guys. So Rhett Warner in about 10 minutes. Uh, up the road in Edmonton last night, McDavid, what a way to get back on the game sheet in terms of scoring a goal. He scores the winner in overtime. It's terrifying to see him three on three, like circle back. When he button hooks back, yeah. you're like, just start skating the other way. Like, why are you skating yeah. backwards? You think you can keep up with this guy? There's no chance. He gets it in overtime. He had three points last night. He's coming for Kucherov. He's coming for McKinnon. He is. He's well, right. He's, he's right on it. Points like, now. Yeah, yeah, he's right on their tail in terms of the Art Ross. And it would not be shocking to anyone if he got it. But the bigger story for me last night is Hyman scoring twice and he's up to 40. I, I am, I've I been watching it all year. I've seen how well he's played since he got to Edmonton. He has been a perfect fit. But he is second in the league in scoring, and he has 40 goals in February. That is a remarkable statistic that yeah. five years ago I would have laughed you. I, I would have said five years ago there's a second better chance. Second in the league in what, Hayes? In goals. Scoring, goal scoring. He's oh, got so he's, 40. Yes, so he's Mc, behind Mc, McDavid. No, he's or, behind or Matthews, Matthews, and that's it. Matthews. He passed Reinhardt last night. Wow. Reinhardt's been stuck, I think, on 39 for a while. He passed Reinhardt. Zach Hyman is second in goals in the NHL. And to finish what I was about to say, if you had have told me five years ago, two things are, are possible. This guy's going to score like 50 in a season, or he's playing in Europe. I'd say he's probably going to be playing in Europe. There's a <laughs> better chance. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. What I mean by that is... It's unbelievable what he's done since he got there. Yeah, you, like your basic scoring, thought in the past was twenty-five to thirty goal guy max. That's out. what I thought. I and yeah, I, I yeah. love Zach Hyman. I love him as a player. I love him what what he represents. And I thought this guy will score twenty-five and his career high will be like thirty-four. He's going to score like fifty-three know, goals this year. Let me just it's say one thing. And I'm not taking anything away from from Zach Hyman. This is just a professional opinion. You know what can bump you to thirty from thirty five to fifty? Ninety seven. Ninety yes. seven. It helps. Yes. But not Dude, that extreme, you, man. You got to give him more credit than that. I, I, I get it, and I don't want to take anything him. away from the guy because you still got to put it into the exactly. net. Exactly. But if you're on a line with ninety seven and you just go to the net, how many goals have you seen where he's gone to the net? And I'll give him credit because a bunch of them he's made backhand moves and he scored the goal himself, but. If you want to grease up the goal total, playing with 97 is the ultimate it, it factor. It certainly does If hurt. there was a fantasy draft on how to, how to up your goal total, 97 is number one on the list. It's number one on the list, but I do not want to take anything away from the guy. Well, but you are, goals though. Like isn't- that, that's what everyone's doing. I'm seeing, like The amount of like Leaf fans that are so jaded, like, wow, it's because it's McDavid. If Reeves was on his line, he'd score four. No, he wouldn't. Like. This guy, he's got no, the I'm stones. Just, I'm to, just pointing something I out. I understand where, that. I understand that McDavid is great. He's still got 40, dude. There's a lot of great players in this league that don't, no one else but Matthews has 40. So the fact that he goes to the net, the fact that he's got the stones to battle, he yes, you can get yeah. a lot of tap-ins. He had them last night. 
Like the one, he's literally in the crease. He just taps it. And like McDavid put it yeah. on a tee for him. That's incredible. But why didn't Pooley Arvey do that? Why doesn't Kane do that? Connor Brown, why he had a chance. Why didn't yeah. he do it? Like it is a skill. It's a day. It's like Dave Anderchuk. Like Dougie Gilmore was unbelievable. Gilmore's passing abilities, but Dave Anderchuk went to the net and he scored fifty because he had stones to do yeah. it. He had the right. hand eye. He had the dexterity. And yes, McDavid yeah. is a machine and is going to inflate your numbers. But forty in February is absurd. It's forty it's still absurd. forty. It, it doesn't matter how they got. Him. Here's the other thing: guy makes five and a half million. Exactly. Five point five million dollars like ken holland you know you say what you want about the jack campbell deal at, at that time whatever it hasn't worked that's a deal that's worked out for them oh like it's it, it, unbelievable it's a, they're deal. calling it the the greatest free agent deal in edmonton oiler history that's what i read to this morning i believe in you know out of edmonton news cycle there which Ooh. is probably not wrong right now the way he's playing yeah tough to argue i mean i i you'd have to go over their history but like Prongs, he got traded there, right? I don't think he's. He was traded from St. Louis there, yeah. Like, but yeah. I, but like right now, especially recency bias. Like this is a guy that you know anybody could have had, and well, the Leafs know, could have had him. The Leafs could make it work. You know, the Leafs. Well, you, there's a lot of people doing that dance. The old, what was the worst thing that happened during the Dubis run? Was it letting Hyman walk for free? The Kadri trade having Jared McCann and then allowing Seattle to pluck him instead of Kerfoot or Dermott. There's no other way oh. around the Hyman. This, watching a guy score 40 goals on another team and McCann being a 40-goal scorer, mm -hmm. there's no other way to summarize that than it being a miss. That's a exactly. miscalculation. Horrible mismanagement. And, and apparently Revisionist the, history, yeah, but still. Yeah, it is. And apparently the deal for Hyman it was not that far off, like just from – Mm -hmm. The term and the money was just not that far off. So the, he goes to Edmonton. It's a miss. There's no other way around it. Like yeah. the guys, well, it, it, he scored. Well, how did he, what did he score last year? He, he's yeah, been in thirty the, in every the 30s. year, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He's been great there. But you know what? Bringing it back to players that play with great players, let's not forget two years ago Michael Bunting's numbers. You know, Michael Bunting was a sixty point guy. Mm -hmm. I don't think he's on a sixty point pace. I believe in in, in Carolina. In, uh, no, Carolina. I, he's not. I don't you know? think. You're, listen, like, I, I'm not downplaying the greatness of McDavid or the ability of, of freebies right. with McDavid. but You're you know, giving the guy props, Hayes. You're giving him props. That's all I'm saying. He deserves I, I think it. Yeah. he deserves everything. And that guy works his ass off for everything he gets. And, and that's what, again, is more disappointing from a Leaf standpoint is that he was a local guy that loved being a Leaf, and he worked his ass off. And that's who you yeah. let walk. You know, like that's the guy you couldn't pay because you had to find money for what? You know, it's just yeah. that that one they're not going to overcome. And the fact is, he was a great leaf for a long time. He'll retire as an oiler, and he'll be known as a great oiler. That's that's what Hyman's going to be. Like Hyman's going to that that's going to be his legacy, not the Leafs. It's going to be the Oilers. Yeah. And he had 36 goals last year, 83 points. And this year he's got 40 and a point a game. Like he's a, he's going to be a point a game guy with probably 52, 53 goals. And credit to Hyman. It's just it's yeah. an incredible story for a guy that again had to really battle to make it and stick around. And he, it's it's a great yeah. story out there. Uh, all right, Rhett Warner coming up. His take on what happened last night with Chris Tanev, where the Flames go from here. The Leafs are in action with Arizona in town tonight. We'll get to that as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. It is a leap year today. So what is this, a leap day? Is that what we call it, a leap day? Um, we got a we got a leap year yeah. bit we'll get to later. Um, we might call I asked Cam guy. Ward. I, I asked Cam Ward. Yeah. He's like, he named some exotic island, and he's like, I'm... I'm at this island for my birthday. I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. Living his best life oh, in yeah. retirement, just, eh? Yeah, it's his should. birthday. <laughs> did he say he's 10 years old or did he say he's 40? Like, how did he answer that? Dude, I didn't go that far. All I said was, hey, Wardo, we were talking about guys born on the 29th. Your name popped up. Any chance you could pop on the show for like 10 minutes? Hey, oh, dog, sorry. I'm in... Blank. Wherever, yeah. Value uh, for whatever, celebrating yeah. my birthday. And I was yeah. like, okay. All right. 
See you later. Middle finger emoji would have been quicker, but uh, it's all good. We appreciate the response. Well, we might call a guy. Duffy's got a buddy who he claims he goes to the gym with. I don't know if that's true or not. Get to the bottom of what it's like to have a birthday on a date like this. But uh, it's a big week in Calgary. Mika Kiprasov will be in town. His number being retired. Noodles, you're out there. And our next guest is out there as well, former teammate of yourself. And Mika Kiprasov and co-host of the Barn Burner podcast. Here's our boy, Rhett Warner. How you doing, Rhett? I'm great. And uh, to further, these goalies, when you try to get them on your shows, they do give you the middle finger because Kiprasov's in town, and I asked them to come on our show, and I got the same response. It was, <laughs> They're all the same. We just have one in the middle who's on every day. <laughs> he does it for I'm all Contractually of obligated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Noodles represents everyone. I love if Kipper was like, I'm somewhere exotic. It's Calgary. Yeah. I can't join you. <laughs> exactly. I can't be a part of the pod. Um, so what do you make of the Tanev deal last night? Like from a Calgary standpoint, that's Lindholm gone. That's uh, Zadorov gone. Tanev, we're bracing for Hannafin. Uh, is this what you were anticipating the whole season? Well, I, I mean, all these moves are good. I think Conroy's done a good job of chipping away at it and not having him all sit on his plate coming up a week away from the trade deadline. So I think that's a good move. I think probably the fans in Calgary are a little underwhelmed and a little concerned with the return for for Tanev, although I don't think it was a bad return. I think they were hoping for more. But I I reached out. My buddy Jay McKee coached, uh, coached the defenseman they picked up, and he said he's just one of those quality individuals, works his tail off, and a guy that you kind of just cheer for. So I, I'm I'm hopeful that it's a good deal. And a lot of it will depend on what they do with that draft pick in the second round. Red, does it make any sense to, like, not stop now? I mean, I don't know what Markstrom's mindset is, but, like, you might as well just get to Hannafin and then Markstrom if he wants to go. Or is it, like, do you do you have to think ahead and say, we got to put a team on the ice next year? <laughs> like, we got NHL uh, yeah. players we need to field the team with next year. Where I'm at, uh, O-Dog, is that this Dustin Wolf is the is is the. He's, I he's get the it, but that, he hasn't made a save in the NHL I, yet. I'm I'm with you. The couple games that he's played hasn't been impressive, and I think, and but I think that's what's that's why it's a question mark, right? Like Buffalo went ahead thinking Levi was going to be the guy this year, and it hasn't turned out that way, and I, it no. didn't make sense to me either why they did it for a guy coming out of college. So, I, I mean, Wolf has a longer history in professional hockey. He's done so much in the AHL, but it's it's still, it's not the NHL. But I, but as far as your, your question, yeah, I'd go all the way with it. I would absolutely go all the way with it. I mean, you look at the pieces that they've given up. They've brought in some young kids. The kids have performed. Is that going to carry you to immediate success? Probably not. But kids these days can play, and the the by the time I don't think they have to trade Markstrom right now. I think it's it's about return. I think Markstrom will be a valuable asset come the you know the the draft or the off season. He's still movable. Then I would try and move him now just to just to do it. You you do have to house a team next year, but. I, these guys have all bought in. Husk has done a hell of a job uh, keeping them focused, and. Marshall's not going to be here when the team's good. I just, you know, or or fighting to go deep in playoff runs. He's keeping them in a playoff hunt right now, but he's the only reason I think that they're in a playoff hunt. If they don't have him, he, they're they're nowhere close. So anyway, I've babbled around your question. I would go all the way. I mean, I would I would explore every trade option, whether it's Markstrom or Manjapani or Coleman, whoever you're calling. I'm listening. Well, and that's where I was going to go, because if I'm a team looking at Markstrom right now, you have to understand that he's having a great season. Like, you want to capitalize on that, because there's no guarantee, because you you can't have your best season every year. So if you're acquiring a guy who's actually playing amazing and has had a great season, kept his team in a playoff run, you know what you're getting, because you don't know what you're going to get next year if he has – you know, a, a, a maybe a lazier off season or just, you know, it doesn't fit for him. Like for me, that's where I'm going to be aggressive on Markstrom because I know he's having a season. And, and Rhett, when I look at it, where do you, 
if you're a player in that dressing room, do you do you know like how's it going to be as far as focus and moving forward? If you know that the doors open and guys are heading out the other way, uh, yeah, I think if Markstrom gets moved, I think Hannafin is that's that's happening. I, think I just can't imagine Hannafin not moving. The only way they wouldn't move him is if they sign him, and I don't think they can sign him. So I think Hannafin's gone. If Markstrom moves, if Markstrom stays, these guys can stay focused and still sell themselves on they have a chance to make the playoffs. If Markstrom moves, it's going to be, uh, I think, the the room, you run the risk of, of that room getting a little bit stale and kind of going, oof, we're, we're in tough here. So my concern, too, as far as Flames are concerned, is that if you move Markstrom, and again, I'm for it, but how do you keep guys like Hubert O, Caudry, Coleman, the kind of the veteran guys going into the off season focused for next year, right? Because they're going to look at the lineup and go, well, we, yeah, we're professional and we can show up and we can play our butts off, but we're young and we don't have a goaltender and we don't have the talent that other teams. How are you going to approach the off season and come back next year with the same focus and energy? I think that's going to be a tough that's going to be a tough one for the Flames. I think that they're doing good this year, and they've had some positive kids. Some kids come in and have positive results, and it's been pretty good overall, considering you know what was maybe expected. I, I think next year might be a different story. I think they sell all these pieces, and they're going to find themselves having to battle again. That Huberdo is going to be an interesting case study because not movable and it's just it's been miserable with the heat on trying to make the playoffs and now it's like what is that what is his body of work going to look like when it's just like we're going to be bad for three years bad. Uh, i don't know i've always bad. hoped he can turn it around rep but it's just it, it it doesn't look good yeah we're trying to sell it right now in calgary you know he's he's a point per game since lindholm's been traded Okay, well that's that's pretty good, but it's still only going to be fifty two points at the end of the year. It's projected to be so you're like, ooh, that's not so good. So I'm with you though, oh dog. I think, but but you're going to be stuck with it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're going to try and have to work with them. And I mean, worst case scenario, maybe there's a back ailment that comes up in two or three years. And you just can't get through it. <laughs> yeah, that that has happened before. <laughs> there are other places in the league that. You know, magically find some sort of issue in a long-term IR stint. Uh, Rhett Warner with us of the Barnburner podcast, longtime NHLer out in Calgary. Mika Kiprasov, his number getting retired this weekend. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting with Kadri. Like, we got a real connection to him, and he's he's had an up-and-down run in Calgary, but he seems to be chugging right now. He's been scoring some big goals. You know, Huberto, we know what his contract is. As O just stated, I think we'd all agree it's it's not a movable asset right now unless something crazy is going the other way. What about Kadri, though? Do you think they're committed to him being, like, the veteran leader on this team, bringing the young guys up? Or, or is it possible at some point in the next year or two, not necessarily the next seven or eight days, but the next year or two, they find a partner for him and he moves on? I think again. I, I'm, for me personally, I'm listening to offers on anyone, and I, I, I think they're content with Kadri. He's played really well with Pospisil and Zari, so he's had a good year this year, and he's he's actually it's been a really good year. He's worked his tail off. There were times last year where we he, it was almost disrespectful the lack of effort and focus that he had. There were times where they were playing games and actually meaningful games, and he just decided. To, to mail it in, so it was it was not a good situation last year. This year, it's been pretty darn good. I don't know what the market is for him though. He's got a long there's a, there's quite a few years left, uh, and he's making a decent amount of dough. I I think the way he's playing right now, he's he's probably it's maybe not worth it the amount of money he's making, but it's not far off. I think it's just people worrying about down the road, and I don't know if the Flames will eat money on it and then i i think he's the kind of guy that wants to be playing on teams that are competitive and if they're not i think i think there's a big mess coming is i guess what the point is they're going to move all these pieces and they're going to get assets in return and they'll get some picks and younger that's all fine and good but you lose a goalie who's your backbone and you've got some veteran guys that are older with long-term contracts yep be a pro okay yeah i'm, I'm being a pro you know, it's it, it's not easy to just be a pro. 
for five, six years left in your deal when you don't think you're, you're going to have a chance of success. Yeah, no question about that. Well, enjoy yourself out there in Calgary. Take care of our boy tonight. Uh, 4 p.m. tomorrow we're on the air. What's that, 2 p.m. Mountain? So let's see what was, Honestly, guys, I know you two both. <laughs> just take tomorrow off. Because yeah. uh, well, I, I I did take no, tomorrow off because be I I'm speaking at a luncheon. I did okay, take good, tomorrow off. off. He's off. Oh, so yes, I'm off tomorrow. <laughs> Honestly, off anyway. I I want to give you one more hour off today, so because I know you and that guy on the other line are so thirsty to see each other and thirsty for no. other things. You guys <laughs> are going to roll the <laughs> yeah, time it's just Calgary tonight. roll it back old school, and I can only imagine the laughs and the stories. So, Brett, have a good time with our boy tonight. We're going to have fun. I hope it is old school and there's no camera phones out. <laughs> Rule number one. Rule number one. Thanks, Rhett. Appreciate it. Have a good one, guys. There he is, Rhett Warner. Uh, the Barn Burner Podcast with Boomer and Pinder. I love it. Um, all right, so Kadri's situation is an interesting one because he's got five years left after this. It was a seven-year deal at, what is it, $7 million cap hit? Yeah, at, that's very seven, yeah. difficult, and it's a full no move. He controls everything. So it's a difficult one to move on. They'd ha- I think they'd have to eat some money. But, you know, if if it's $5 million a year for five more, he's 33, he's still a gamer. Can you get yeah, three that- more years out of Nas where he's got life and he's got spunk and he's – you know, playing the way we know he can play. I, There's I could a bunch see of a teams that, that are talented. I mean, that could use some veteran, like, just jam. Mm-hmm. You look at New they, Jersey, Carolina, like, they got to be looking at a guy. Like, I don't know if they want him or not, but it's like, you could use that guy in your lineup. He's He plays I for mean, keeps, and come playoff time, he's a player. Where would he, he would fit in Boston. He would fit in a lot of these teams where, yeah. you know, you're looking for help down the middle. But again... You're, these managers would be looking for rentals, not a guy who's got five years yeah, left. Exactly, exactly. And, and even if you made him a five million dollar player, you still have five years left at a, at a you know, a thirty three year old. Like at some point, that contract's not going to look great on your. Yeah, but books. you know what teams think, Jamie? That are, that are in the now, they're like, you know what? After three years, that's someone else's problem anyway, and you just make it go away somehow. That's that's the way they look at situations like that. Well then, then, then they should be all in on him because he is a gamer, and he's proven that he can, you know, win and and be effective in the playoffs. Not in Toronto, but in Colorado because mm-hmm. he was great. And, like I still think it's the craziest thing. He he had the exact same hit twice <laughs> in the playoffs. It's, exact same hit. Yeah, I, it it really is. It's a million to one, man. Like the idea. I, what I guy, find crazier is that for a team that was kind of quiet and skilled that they felt that that was just not a part of the program and you had to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. I don't care if he got suspended two years in a row. After, after, after what all the other guys look like and the way their demeanor is, to, to say that that guy's got to be the one on the way out and then what they brought in and how that worked out, that was insane. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, again, at the time, though, like he was taking he, a lot of deserved heat. Like it was stupid. You know, he gets Dude, suspended I get twice. It. I get it, but I would rather I, I would rather calm a guy down than say, Where the hell were you in the playoffs? I agree. And I, I think agreed, if, yeah. I I am sure if Shanahan, because it doesn't matter about Dubas anymore, if Brendan Shanahan, I'm sure, had a do over and could look back, he'd say, That one, what was I thinking there? You know, but the, the truth is, all of this stuff, like we, we talked about with Hyman, it connects to Tavares more than anything else. More than right. their actions, it was we're paying John 11, and we're going to pay Austin, Mitch, and Nylander, so what are we going to do? You know, And that, that was a big part of it, too. It wasn't only about their actions. It was about the money and the fit and how much money was going to be available to them. I believe he was making four at the time. He was making like four, yeah. four and a half, absolutely. And it was just, it's an awful trade, terrible. I mean, there's no way of – again, I would say the Dubas era, the Kadri deal and letting Hyman walk for nothing – Looking back on it, those are those are two of the worst, you know, seven or eight moves in modern Leaf history. Like no question. But you know, every team makes mistakes. Guys yep. move on. They fit in. They play differently. Nas at that point was was in a bad place because of the suspensions. Yeah, uh, Hyman was not a fifty goal scorer. You know, things change over time. But the Leafs are still a really good team, and you know, the big boys are still here and. They're they're going to the playoffs, and it's not like they've completely fallen off. And that's the scenario. It's just a couple guys got away. 
All right, Chris Johnston coming up in 15 minutes. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. All right, Chris Johnston will join us in about 10 minutes on the Chris Tanev trade last night. Calgary to Dallas. What happens with Hannafin, Markstrom, and others out of Calgary? Where do the Leafs go from here? Bruce Cassidy in Vegas, in Boston tonight. A lot of rumors now that Elias Pettersson and the Canucks could actually be working on a long-term deal. Funny how that happened. Yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, really. you know, there's a lot of pressure and something took place. And we'll get to the bottom of that. We'll see what CJ can tell us about it. And um, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. is speaking today about his arbitration case and about his future in Toronto. We'll tell you about what he had to say earlier today and uh, get into the Raptors loss last night and LeBron and the Lakers storming back in the Clippers. Incredible last night. They were down 21 and LeBron did it again. He's 39 years old, and he's still cooking the way he's cooking. It's incredible what this guy can do at his age. So more on that still to come as well. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.